Look at what they've got. Capture it. That's fine. Capture it. This is police brutality in Melbourne, mate. That's uncalled for. He's a security guard working on the job. Did you do that to Channel 9? Did you do that to Channel 7? Did you do that to SBS and ABC? Did you? And he's not an offender. He's not an offender. He's my security guard. He's and joining us now is our chief Australia correspondent, our friend Avi Yamini. Avi, great to see you. Thanks for getting up at an odd hour to be interviewed with us. Um, I was upset that they targeted your security guard, Daniel, who's a very professional guy, very low key. He follows the rule, the best fight is the one you never get into. So he's not a troublemaker. He's professional, insured, licensed, the whole thing. I think cops were trying to get at you by getting at your team. It certainly seems that way, Ezra. It seemed, and it felt in, in the moment, um, very targeted. It's kind of, they, they looked past me as in, we know he's untouchable, but how do we get him? We get the next best thing. We get the guy who's there simply to protect him lawfully, even under the health directions. It's outrageous. You, you say um, the police might call you untouchable. Of course, no one's untouchable, but you are so compliant with the law. You know the law. In many cases, you know better than the cops. Like, for example, you know there's a specific exemption on masks for journalists who were talking into the camera. Now, that makes sense. Obviously, you can't really be a TV journalist as your mouth is covered. Some of these cops don't know that. You have schooled them before. You're very compliant. You're following the rules. And if the cops come at you, we've got several lawsuits against the cops for false arrest. So I think that's what you mean by a, they can't. That, 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 you, that, you, go ahead. Uh, they, know that, they know that I follow the law, uh, the, uh, the, the rules by the letter of the law, and that, uh, like you say, I seem to be more versed than them. So when I say untouchable, I mean on two levels. One, they know that when they cross the line, um, we take them to court with the help of the viewers. and. Um, we go directly to the Supreme Court. And then on top of that, it's the embarrassment of if you don't know the rules that you're trying to enforce and you're doing it simply out of a, for a power trip, um, you get schooled and, and the entire, exposed to the entire world as the power hungry um, person you are. Yeah, oh, I mean, I think you're doing great. And I'm, and I'm very pleased that we are suing the Victoria Police. That's the name of the police force in the state. That's also the police in the city of Melbourne, I understand. Um, so they know that they can't push you around with impunity. Uh, that's why I'm a little surprised they're going after Daniel, uh, your, your bodyguard. Um, I, I have some theories. I feel like, you know, they've been told now, don't, don't grab him. He's not worth the the pain that we're going to feel you know that, that trust me they're feeling a lot of pain in the courts for you know for, I, I know what's happening in the back end so it's clear um that they don't like what we're putting them through so they've they've given some sort of notice to the people on the ground as in you know make sure if you engage you're a hundred percent in the right but nobody told them that they can't grab my security guard mm -hmm. and that's the kind of behavior we're seeing well, um, as you know, we have a policy, don't leave anyone behind. We really go the extra mile if someone on our team's under attack, either if they're physically attacked in some way or if they're legally attacked in some way. In this case, both things happen to Daniel. So I'll let you reveal anything on your own time. I know we've got some really good lawyers down under. So when you and Daniel and our lawyers are ready to make an announcement, about what you're gonna do, if anything, let, let us know, of course, consult with us. I'm sure our viewers would love to crowdfund it. I, I know you're a big hit down under, but in Canada, the UK, the United States, a lot of people get their Australian news from you, especially on the lockdown. So I think you would, you, and by extension, your bodyguard, Daniel, would get a lot of support. I, I know from Canada, you would. Um, Appreciate it. Well, and and give my, I've never met Daniel. In fact, he's a really low key guy. Uh, just make sure he knows that we've got his back. I, I, I'm sure he does know that, but you can tell him from me. He does. He, he does, and he knew he knew straight away. We, you know, we had Madeline, who's been doing a lot of our fight the fines and and uh, some of our civil action as well um, against Victoria Police. She was on the phone immediately. She was speaking to the sergeant. She was the one who actually organize all that and uh, Daniel's you know once we got off that camera he just goes can you tell Madeline thank you
because he he felt that he was he wasn't alone inside. They didn't let me talk to him. They didn't let me uh, even engage with the police that were the, the arresting officers or whatever. But it was the lawyer could. And he felt that um, level of comfort because they came into him and they said, uh, "Is Madeline Smith your lawyer?" And he said, "Yes, she's my lawyer." And uh, and moments later, he was then released. Well, that's really great to hear. And I've never been put in jail or, or a police cell myself, so I can only imagine what it would be like. But I'm sure uh, worry and risk and, uh-oh, how long am I in here? What do I do? Am I doing the right thing? I'm sure those are all questions that come to mind. So it must have been comforting for him to know there was someone on the case. And we've worked with Madeline before. I've had the pleasure of talking with her several times on the phone. She's pretty sharp and she's got an excellent record. Well, I, I suppose that's the, the most important thing. She wins, so, um, so that's really good. You mentioned earlier that the police sort of have the word out, you know, don't mess with Avi unless you're going in with clean hands. I think police should be that way all the time, but just in case folks are skeptical and they think maybe it's some narcissism on your part, if you watch that whole video, the police clearly know who you are, clearly know your name, and they, they call you by your first name, first name basis to each other. In fact, there was a moment you caught it on tape where a boss cop tells the other cops, watch what Avi does, and if he does anything more, we'll have to have more enforcement against him. That's not verbatim, but they, they basically are saying, get him if we can. And, and Exactly. Yeah, they're, 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 set, they're setting it up for, and, and that has a lot to do with the cases we have in front of the courts at the moment, because until now, it's all been unlawful arrest, unlawful detainment, um, and so now what they try to do, they're trying to, and even in their wording, they try to entrap you. So they lock you into, well, you've set it up that we asked you what you were doing here. You weren't doing journalism suddenly. You were actually here for a, for a purpose that was unlawful. So that's why we all, at least we can say, they don't need, to, they, they know why I'm there. They just need to be able to argue that they believed or that they were they had reason to conduct an investigation. Investigation involves arresting me. And that's what he was doing in that moment. But as soon as he realized I wasn't gonna fall for his trick, he just, you know, stomps away. That's an excerpt from my daily show, The Ezra Levant Show. Every day I do a monologue on the news of the day, then I interview an interesting guest, and then I read my hate mail. You gotta subscribe. Go to rebelnews.com.